This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, if there's one thing that the holiday season teaches us, it's that miracles can and do happen. Unfortunately, some of those miracles are miracles in name only. Case in point, Miracle in Toyland. Before we begin, it's necessary to point out that while this movie may be a cheap cash grab meant to exploit the holiday season, it was also written, produced, and directed by Diane Eskenazi. Most people will want to take advantage of this unique position of total creative control and try to give us something truly unique and entertaining. But instead, she spent the majority of her time giving us cheap knockoffs of much better movies. Remember the nuttiest nutcracker? We have her to thank for that! Today's movie opens on... an episode of G.I. Joe? Easy listening. That's the kind of music you hear when having Nam flashbacks. It's alright. I know just what to do. There we go. This is all taking place in the head of our protagonist, whose name is, I'm not kidding here, Jesse Justice. I bring that up because not only is it an incredibly stupid name for someone who isn't a superhero, but we're going to meet some other characters later on, the names of whom include Toy Woman, Elf Girl, and Super Duper Guy. This is the kind of writing we had to look forward to in this movie. Anyway, after Jesse Justice is done with his Red Brown fantasy, in which he crashes and burns, a fitting metaphor for this movie, we dissolve to him having breakfast with his father, who not only is a colonel in the Air Force, but is also looking incredibly young despite having survived the sinking of the animated Titanic almost 90 years ago. He dissolves to his car and takes off for work, leaving Jesse alone with his cousin, Gabriella, who looks a little more touchy-feely than I imagine most cousins are. Oh, hey! Listen, did you see that new Super Duper Guy toy on TV? I don't need toys. I'd rather have other stuff like, like climbing gear and weights. Dad, nobody needs toys, Jesse. But apparently we need to be looking through your open legs as you talk about toys. By the way, voice actor Cam Clark may do a good job of voicing Leonardo from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but he does not do a little kid well at all. He sounds like he's in his 20s. And Gabriella is voiced by Debbie Derryberry, who you may recognize as the voice of Runt from Alpha and Omega. I'll do my best to not hate her because of that. You are too young to be this serious, you know. Yeah, how young are you supposed to be, exactly? I mean, your dialogue suggests preteen, but your character design suggests... Hey there, guys. I'm legal now, and I'm taking full advantage of it. We dissolve to the two of them at their soccer practice, where Jesse can't help but do a little showboating. Yeah! Hey, look, I didn't mean to... Yeah, right. Smooth move, Ace. What was I supposed to do? Think of other people, too. He was on your team. He was slower, and I was just trying to win the game. And you just ran through a wormhole. Why are you so far behind her? Then we dissolve again back to Jesse's house. I scored the winning goal in the soccer game today. Son, we're Americans. We don't care about soccer. 
Unfortunately, his dad tells him that he's flying out for another mission tomorrow, which just happens to be Christmas Eve. And we dissolve again to the next morning, where the movie somehow rips off that scene from Treasure Planet where Jim Hawkins' dad leaves him, even though this movie predates Treasure Planet by two years. Did Disney rip this movie off? We then dissolve again to... What? Some past memories? His imagination? The not-too-distant future after his dad comes back? Movies usually employ dissolves to imply a passage of time, but this movie's been using them so frequently that I have no idea what's happening or when. And why is his dad playing ball with him in uniform? Then we dissolve again to that war fantasy that he had before, where he's imagining that he's hallucinating visions of his dad. Okay. Dissolve back to his bedroom. Dissolve to him lying down on the couch. Then Gabriella shows up to pull him out of his badly mixed funk. Seriously, the music's trying to drown out the dialogue here. It must be hard having your dad gone on Christmas. Hey, he's gone a lot. I can handle it. I don't need anyone. You don't, huh? Well, if you didn't have anyone around, who'd you get to tickle you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, promise me you'll go somewhere with me. I'll just help you into your clothes between cuts. No one look, this is going to be kind of weird. Then his girlfriend cousin uses a dissolve to take him to a massive toy store called Toyland. Not original. Look, Jesse. Isn't this the most awesome thing you've ever seen? Wow. Just make a wish here, and you get it. Attention, Toyland shoppers. Toyland will be closing in 15 minutes. Wow, where to start with this? One, I would imagine that a kid who thinks he's too old to play with toys is probably going to think he's too old to cry about his dad being away during Christmas. Taking him to a toy store would probably make him feel like you're just rubbing it in. Aw, oh, does a little guy miss his daddy? Let's go to the toy store, that'll make it all better. Two, thanks to the movie's constant use of dissolves, I have no idea what time of day it's supposed to be. Is it still early morning when dad left? How long was Jesse asleep? The store's closing suggests that it's late evening, but we don't know for sure. 3. Great job, Gabriella. You brought your cousin to the toy store just as it was closing. I envy your time management skills. 4. What kind of toy store is closing when there's still daylight on Christmas Eve? Where are all the last minute shoppers? Then the kid who thinks he's too old for toys jumps into a giant toy race car and gets into a race. Because that makes so much sense. Hey, you just passed that guy! Great continuity! Daddy, that's enough! I'm scared! But I'm not done yet! I can beat the record! Record? What record? You didn't even know about this place until a few minutes ago! What, do you have to win at everything that you see that has the slightest competitive edge to it? Gabriella leaves in a huff since Jesse only cares about himself, I guess. Then we dissolve again to see Jesse wandering aimlessly through the store. My god, this animation is lousy. Let's take a moment to really look at what's going on here. First of all, their use of scale is just terrible. Look at that couch on the shelf back there. Jesse could easily lie on it. Secondly, in this one aisle, we see a few random balls, some car dozers, some dinosaurs, a big Pikachu, robots, teddy bears, tin flying saucers from the 1950s, and a Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker set. Who's organizing the store's inventory? And on this end of the aisle, we have Mr. Mars, and... a bong? Or is it... uh... Oh, isn't it great to be a kid at Christmas? Because Jesse can't stand the sight of other kids being happy on Christmas, he runs away into the toy store's camping supply section, just like all toy stores have. He slips into a tent and- WHOA! HEY! I know you're frustrated, kid, but save that for when you get home! We're only 13 minutes in. We shouldn't have this many must-be-a-bob shows by now. No one cares about me. <laughs> wow, that show was fast. No one cares about me! <laughs> Oops, sorry. Wrong tent. Yep. 
he falls asleep, and now we're watching Crybabies in Toyland. Hi there! I'm Super Duper Guy, the amazing action hero figure specifically designed to always do the right thing and pretty much save the world. By the way, I'm also quite sensitive. Thanks, Captain Cosmo from the Fairly Odd Parents, but we don't need your online dating profile. These toys tell Jesse that they want to help him, but he thinks he's beyond help since he just keeps hurting people. No, wait! I have the answer! Use the power of caring! If you care about others above yourself, they'll care about you! And you won't hurt anyone! Is he a superhero or a Care Bear? Wow, man. Heavy. It makes me feel so at one with things. The Christmas Elf is a Buddhist. Go figure. Then, because Jesse thinks nobody cares about him, Every toy with an earshot has to sing a song to get him to stop his bitching. Lift your eyes up to the sky. Look ahead to your eyes meeting mine. Oh my god, the toys are coming on to him! And hey, where did Polkanatas get her blue dress? Did she skin Babe the Blue Ox? I'll hold you when the world is gone. Ugh, do you have to make that face when she's hugging you? I hope we're not seeing his O face right now. Lift your eyes up to the sky. And Bone Crusher, the not Decepticon, lost his accent. Smooth. Wow, man. Heavy. Lift your eyes up to the sky. Then they bust out the Valentine's decorations? Wrong holiday, guys. We also see Pocahontas three times in this panning shot. Nice work, animators. And oh my god, look at this butchered perspective! This largest soldier is supposed to be the closest to us in the foreground, but his arm is behind the soldier next to him, and his arm is behind the soldier next to him! It's a conga line of Etrushka soldiers! Oh well, we couldn't think of a way to end the song, so on to the next scene! Our left flank is being attacked by their right flank! Our soldiers are trapped! We need to go save them! Round up the guys in the mess camp! Reporting for duty, Captain Agro, sir! Okay, I'm confused. Ghostbuster General Winston here needs all available soldiers. Okay, fine. He's not going to rely on only one toy line to help him, but... What kind of toy line has Fred Flintstone in Army Fatigues? And they have Beetle Bailey, some lesser G.I. Joe character, and Dr. Scratch and Sniff from the Animaniacs, and Professor Farnsworth from Futurama. Good news, everyone! I've managed to clone and shrink myself so that I can become a soldier in the Christmas Army! <laughs> they find one of their... uh... wounded soldiers. Were these action figures fighting exactly? We have to rescue the radio! If the enemy gets a hold of that thing, we're all in great danger! Why? Who are attacking you? Why do they want the radio? Why would them having the radio put you in great danger? Why are Runt and Cosmo in this movie? What does this have to do with Christmas? Jesse is instructed to stay behind with Private Pansy while the rest of them look for the radio that won't be mentioned again in this story. Seriously. But because he's a whiny little bitch who can't follow orders, he has to go with them to be part of the action. Listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take one of these, and you take one. I literally pulled these walkie-talkies right out of my ass. Winston shoots him out for abandoning his post. He and the other soldiers go back to help their fallen comrade, and Jesse somehow gets back to him first. How the hell did that happen? That wormhole from before is chasing him. You left me alone. Then, like Emery Elizabeth from Magic Gift of the Snowman, he loses the will to live and dies of a broken heart. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry I left you alone. Oh, if I had been thinking of myself, this never would have happened. <laughs> oh no, the little girly man is crying again. Time to put the war on hold so we can sing a new song, everyone. <laughs> Actually, they don't sing a new song to make Jesse feel better. But they do just completely forget about this war, wherein apparently one of their friends was just killed, so they can help this unnamed pirate toy look for his lost treasure. I can appreciate the spirit of Christmas putting an end to war, but this isn't how you do it! The treasure must be on the ship! How would a pirate lose his treasure on his ship? A hip, uh -huh, a hip, a hip. 
<laughs> Did the Bang Bang Boogie get up, jump the boogie? So they get into a sword fight with the crew of the first pirate who lost his treasure. Completely different pirates? I don't know. What I do know is that these pirates, who are meant to be sold to little kids, probably don't have swords sharp enough to make this fight the slightest bit dangerous. And a sword fight with no danger is a sword fight with no purpose. Here, Jesse! Thanks, Agro! Did he just call that guy Afro? I heard him say Agro, which is not much better. But at least it's a little less racist. <laughs> oh, and I guess Super Duper Guy is Inspector Gadget. Go, go, Gadget Arms! The pirates are soon dealt with, and our heroes are victorious. Come on! Let's find the treasure! Because that's the true spirit of Christmas. Looking for money! So they find the treasure in the crow's nest of all places. <laughs> We're rich! Why are you so excited by that? That stuff is worthless! Remember? You're in a toy store! Oh, my big buster! This elf really could use some accessories! Isn't it nice that we have these people to teach Jesse how to care about others? Now that this subplot is over with, it's time to ignore it just as quickly as we did the last one. Does she get hungry every time she admires a new piece of jewelry? I know I keep asking this question over and over and over again, but why are so many movies made by people who have no idea what human beings are or what they do? Food, yeah. Send out for pizza. Her fish and chips, mate. Oh, I know. How about Chinese? It's Christmas Eve. I don't think they're open. Yes, they are. That's where the Jews go at Christmas. Hello! Do you have any money? You're all toys! Of course he doesn't have any money! What about the treasure he just got? Oh, right. My mistake. Do try to keep up. Do you have any money? Uh, monies? Yeah, like dinero, dolero, the bloom, centavos, plastic, baby? Yep, got plenty of plastic around here. Hey, who you calling plastic, you puffed up and jitched and molded mass of a... <coughs> oh. Is the plastic toy offended by the other plastic toy calling him plastic? Does not compute. How about chocolate? Oh, chocolate! 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 chocolate. He looks at the star on the top of the tree and somehow thinks of chocolate. Okay. They decide to get the chocolate, which is where? By standing on top of each other's shoulders so they can get into a plane that's somewhere. It's time to enter the fray, my friend. But how do I... Wait a minute. What is that? Binkula? I am Binkula. I bid you welcome. Ugh, just look at this background. This horrible perspective is killing me! Nobody who worked on this animated movie knows how to draw! They're about to topple over, but wait a minute! You can fly?! Why didn't you volunteer to fly up there yourself as soon as Jesse said he needed to get to that plane?! I'm sorry, but no! You can't fly! Why not? You are a toy! Ugh! So, Jesse uses the plane, which of course has fully functional controls inside the cockpit, and then... Wait, what? How did that happen? How did he grab that star? How did he lose his grip and then make the star magically fly forward towards the propeller? How did it chop up the star into perfectly machine-deposited chocolate chips? Or maybe the movie's finally being honest about what it's actually doing. Raining sh** all over us. You didn't have to risk your skibbies for us like that, matey! To get you guys chocolate, I strip the chips from the chocolate chip cookies and smush it into a big chocolate ball! Stop talking about stripping and balls and gah! Uh. Oh, someone really needs a shower. Mm, not me. I'm not designed to smell. 
was the teddy bear designed to smell? He's a teddy bio. Then they all get bored of the movie and decide to sleep it off. Jesse wakes up back at the tents, having apparently dreamed the whole thing. Hey. Hey, you guys, what's going on? Don't tell me this was a dream. Okay, fine. You really shrunk down to size, you really befriended a whole bunch of toys, you really grew back to normal size, and now they're really all dead again. Happy? He runs outside and finds Gabriella waiting for him. Uh, yeah, how long was he sleeping in there? The only other person he sees is this janitor, which suggests that he's been in there since after the store closed. Why was Gabriella just waiting out there for so long instead of trying to go back inside to look for him when he didn't come out? I wanted to apologize for... well, for being so mean to you. I promise I'll never do it again. That's not how cousins hug. So glad we found you. Whoa, are you kidding me? They sent the military after me because I, I stayed in the toy store all night? All night? I thought maybe he just slept a little past closing time, but Gabriella was waiting out there for him all night and into the next day? Boy, you need to get your girlfriend cousin something extra special to say, I'm sorry, baby. As it turns out, this officer is here to give Jesse some sad news. The plane Colonel Justice was flying went down in a remote area of the mountains. Wreckage has been spotted, but there's no sign of the Colonel. But they're looking for him, right? They'll find him, won't they? Well, unfortunately, snowstorm conditions have forced us to suspend further rescue attempts until the weather clears. Or rather, it might have been some sad news if the movie actually cared. The rushed pacing, the completely out-of-place music, this is supposed to be a huge punch to the gut, but they treat it like everything else in this movie, which has been completely pointless. Can we at least pretend this is kind of a big deal? You need more than just Jesse tearing his bedroom apart. Why? 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 Jesse decides to go back to the toy store, since the toys are the only things in the world that can help him find his dad. Jesse's kind of an idiot. Whoa, 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 whoa! Get out of here! What good are you? Hey, buddy, come on. I understand perfectly that you're upset, but the boxes have feelings too. But it turns out the toys actually are alive, and they come out to meet Jesse. My dad's plane crashed, and they can't find him! Didn't they send out a search and rescue unit? Well, the weather's bad! Uh, will we something? You guys are my only friends. Will you help me? I'd ask my cousin to help, but we're kind of going through a rough patch right now. What do we do? Thrill as they stand around, thinking! Do you mind? I'm trying to have a thought here. Well, I know what I would do! What? <sighs> I want to give these animators some props for blurring little afro here and giving the illusion of depth via racked focus. Hell, I loved surprising my fellow animation students when I did the same thing when all we were supposed to do was a simple little walk cycle. Except where this illusion of depth fails is that they put in BEHIND Jesse making it look like he's a regular-sized person looking away from him. Since Pocahontas is more in tune with nature and crap, that means that she has magical powers to make herself and the other toys grow. Even though, you know, she's a freaking toy! Victory lies ahead! Thanks, you guys. I don't know what to say. How about, WHAT THE HELL'S GOING ON?! They decide to investigate where Dad's plane is said to have crashed, and they do this by tying an inflatable raft to the back of a giant toy biplane. Uh, you want to put the small child in the cockpit or something? Was this the only toy plane that they could find to bless with the colors of the wind? They couldn't find a toy commercial airliner or something? And their super duper guy, once again flying like he did in his smaller action figure size. If this guy is supposed to be a stand-in for Superman, What's stopping him from finding Jesse's dad with his telescopic vision and super hearing? Or, hell, why doesn't he just fly around the world so fast that he reverses the flow of time and stops the crash from ever happening? And the reason the Air Force isn't looking for his dad right now is because of the bad weather, right? 
Maybe he could use his heat vision to make the bad weather dissipate? You're thinking of that other guy. You know, red cape, blue tights, square jaw, dorky girlfriend. <laughs> really? Thor acknowledging the existence of Superman? Superman is a thing in this world? I'm sorry, but in a universe where Superman exists, some knockoff hero calling himself Super Duper Dumbass can't! They crash into a nearby mountain, but of course everyone is perfectly fine since we didn't see them hit the mountain, we just dissolved to them already being on the mountain. Urgh, should have brought me Thermes! Get a lot of use out of your Thermes in the Caribbean, do ye? They find his dad instantly, and then an avalanche happens. Because why not? I gotcha! Jesse, what are you doing here? First I was on the ground, now I'm hanging off of a branch. I don't even know what I'm doing here! He gets his dad onto the raft when you'd think that the avalanche would have gotten them by now. And for some reason, Dad doesn't notice the giant toys that Jesse came with. It looks as though maybe the toys are just figments of Jesse's imagination, but then Dad does finally notice them, so what the hell was even the point of that? What's all the screaming about? That! You're not very observant, are you, Mr. Air Force Colonel? Whoa! By the way, high edges of the animation that you can see since the image was turned slightly on its side during editing? Might as well be a boom mic. Sadly, they all make it safely across the cliff. Is everybody okay? Does anyone need medical attention? Bandages? Penicillin? Krypton? Why would you suggest Krypton? You're not Superman, so you wouldn't be suggesting Kryptonite or your home planet as medical attention, and Krypton is usually used for specialized lighting or some kind of special flash photography, so that doesn't make sense either. WHAT ARE YOU TALKING ABOUT?! But no one needs any medical attention. Everyone's fine. Hooray. You got a fine boy there, sir! You sure do! Indeed! Uh -huh. yeah. Well, he cries a little too much, but... Oh, that is... That just means he's sensitive. I know about these things. Uh, you must understand, sir, if you will. The boy is a bit different. He has a thing for his cousin, you see. They're like Holly and Hal Moose. They sled their way down to the nearest town, then dissolve back home for a festive Boxing Day morning. Or maybe they use the magic of the dissolve to go back in time to Christmas the day before. Who the hell knows? And Colonel Dad has apparently stolen truckloads of presents that were probably meant for Toys for Tots or something. Because that's what Christmas is all about. Jesse suggests that they give the toys to other kids who need them more, and that might be telling of his newly found sense of generosity and altruism if the movie didn't just open with him thinking that toys were pointless. Look at this. They have at least two trucks worth of presents, but when they swing by the county orphanage to redistribute them, they only hand them out one at a time. Once they see that these nine orphans are satisfied with one present each, they'll just leave and keep the rest for themselves. Slick. Oh, at this point, I think we should have a big old whore. Yeah, sure, have yourself a big old whore. Merry Christmas, kids! So, that was Miracle in Toyland, and it was a miracle that I survived this movie! I mean, holy shit, this was rancid. The story has no idea what it wants to do or what it wants to say, the dialogue sounds like it was written by an alien, the animation is sloppy, the editing is insulting, the music's completely out of place and won't shut the hell up, the voice actors sound like they're phoning it in, the characters are bland and boring, the kissing cousins dynamic between our leads is just weird, and what was actually accomplished? I think the idea was that Jesse was supposed to learn a lesson in caring about others, but would he not have tried to save his dad if he didn't learn that lesson? I don't think he was that much of a douche noodle. Then again, regardless of motivation or potential lack thereof, he wouldn't be able to do anything without the divine intervention of toys. Are toys supposed to be the meaning of Christmas? That's not what Christmas is supposed to be about! In short, if you're looking for a Christmas movie where the toys come to life, I suggest you stick with Jim Henson's The Christmas Toy.
Old friends, new friends, home with the family, we'll be together at Christmas. Snowflakes, sleigh bells, bringing back memories, we'll be together at Christmas. Something strange with passing years. Well, looks like everything worked out really nicely here. I guess there's only one thing for me to do, which is join in. Comment. Shit.